No joke for James. James's paintwork was scratched by a stone dropped from a bridge by Oodlum. A pencil worked well into the evening mending the scratch, and when everyone woke next morning, you'd never have known there was ever a scratch there. Look at me, said James happily. I'm the smartest, most unique engine on the line. Is that just because you're the only red engine here? Asked Brooke. I'm the only grey engine here, so I stand out just as much as you. Grey's such a drab colour, sniffed James. Well, said Brooke, if you think your red coat stands out so much, you can fetch your own train today. James didn't care. He ventured into the yard to do his own shunting. He was in too good a mood to let it bother him. But Gordon found it contemptuous. Your shunting days are well behind you, James, he said. Tender engines don't shunt. James started to feel uneasy. But he had a good run with his goods train, and there were no Oldhams out and about today. He was still boastful when he returned to the big station and was dropping off his trucks in the shinings. I'm the pride of the line, he said proudly. I only ever see you pulling trucks, uh, a coach of the yard piped up. His name was Mongongo. You're only a goods engine. I pulled the express yesterday, objected James. Only because Gordon wasn't ready in time, uh, said Mongongo. I'm not just a goods engine, said James indignantly. I pull coaches too, just not filthy rusty old coaches like you. You don't pull coaches as much as Gordon and Mildred do, uh, sniffed Mongongo. But to top matters plans for me, James smirked. What sort of plans? asked Mongongo. James's schmack faltered. He'd been bluffing. Uh, wait and see, he said with a weak grin. James got an idea. He opted to spend the night in the big station yard. He woke in the morning to find Brooke shunting the express coaches. I'll fetch your freight train next, James, she said when she saw him. Actually, Brooke, said James, I'm taking the express today. Sir Topham had asked me to tell you. Okay, what about the cars? asked Brooke. Cars? Oh, trucks, said James. They'll go with Gordon. Brooke asked no further questions. And when Charlie and Shit arrived, James told them the shame story he told Brooke. Soon, everything was happening at once. James was coupled to the express and was on his way. Brooke brought a rake of wagons to the goods platform. Gordon arrived. Where's the express going? He spluttered. As James and the express sped out of sight, Brooke told Gordon what had happened. So here are your cars, she finished. She chuffed contently away back to the shinings. Gordon was cross, and so were his crew. Wait till Sir Tom Hatt hears about this. James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan, he smiled to himself. Later that day, when he was making his return trip, he saw Gordon waiting in the loop with a goods train. Gordon did not look happy at all. Then, when James reached the workstation, he was surprised to see Brooke there. What are you doing here? he asked. Brooke scowled at him. Some jokes are funny, but not this one. Thanks to you, I'm being sent back to the military railway. The signal changed, and Brooke puffed away. James did not enjoy the rest of his run with the express. He soon returned to the big station and saw me standing on the platform. Sir, he said as he pulled in, it wasn't Brooke's fault, it was mine, I tricked her. You didn't have to send her away. I almost told James that I actually did, that I hadn't bought Brooke, I'd only rented her, and that this was the day she was to return to the military railway. But then I thought now was not the time for James to know this. Well, if you're going to play tricks, I said, you could do the shunting for a while. James did so without complaint for several days. It would be some time before he learned that Brooke leaving the yard was not a punishment. For the rest of our journey home, Brooke had been grinning. Some jokes are funny, and that includes mine.